This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. And now, Thriller Thursdays on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. This program is a Duad's collaboration with Purple Radio. Content warnings may be found in the episode description. Monsieur de Cheville is here. Now. Already. Monsieur de Cheville. I have to admit, I didn't expect you so soon after your... Musketeers began their rampage. In all fairness, Madame de la Tremouille, it's your men who made the sortie against His Majesty's musketeers. They tried to burn down my hotel, Captain. Yes, yes, all trivial matters. It is my understanding, however, based on several witnesses, that Monsieur Bernajou is the one who initiated the whole affair. <gasps> Seeing as he arrived on my doorstep, banging on the gates like it would set his door, I am inclined to believe the opposite. I only want to clear up this affair, madame. By all means. But I have been well informed that the fault lies entirely with your musketeers. If you are so certain, then you won't deny the proposal I'm about to make. Make it, monsieur. I listen. How is Monsieur Bernajou? As well as anyone on death's door, stabbed right through the lung. And the doctor is not hopeful. Yes, yes, but he is conscious. Can he talk? With difficulty, but yes. Well then, he would not dare to lie before his final judgment. You wish to question him? (sighs) Very well. This way. Madame de la Tramouille, Monsieur de Treville, my pardons. Oh, do not Uh exert yourself, Monsieur Bernajou. Uh To what do I owe the honour of your visit on my deathbed, Monsieur de Trevi? I wish to know the truth of what happened today. (laughs) Fine. I'll tell you what happened. Duads presents The Three Musketeers Episode 5, King Louis the Thirteenth. Would someone like to remind me why we're coming to Monsieur d'Artagnan's lodgings instead of going to yours, Athos? For the time being, his eminence does not know where our newest companion lives. Thus, it is the safest place. Not only that, but the Red Guards will be looking for him the most vigorously, because he has defeated not only Jussac, but Bernajou as well. Athos is right, Aramis. It is best if we all stay near one another. Strength in numbers. Um, would... Uh, could you... <laughs> all right, technically, I'm not allowed to have visitors in my room, so could we... We'll keep it down, boy. Don't worry. Of course! We would be distraught if you were a victim of forced to leave Paris forever. Aramis! Oh, I mean, uh, Aramis. Oh, finally. Oh, I thought those stairs would never end. I'm sorry, there isn't much here. I've only just moved in. Do not apologize. Hmm. I feel almost sorry for you. This place is a 
A glorified shoebox. The bed is really firm. You'd like it, Athos. Oh, uh, y- yes. Everyone, please take a seat. Where seats are available. I think I'll stand. It may be prudent, Monsieur Athos, if you don't mind me saying. And again with the boot licking. Perhaps it would be best to stay away from the window so that you're not seen. I wouldn't be concerned, but this is your apartment. Apartment is a strong word. Cozy, if we're being generous. (laughs) I think it'll need a little more embellishment before it impresses any of the ladies. Or any of the gentlemen. Aramis. (sighs) Uh, uh, So, boy... You've been in Paris for, uh, how long now? Three days, counting today. And already leaving a trail of bodies in his wake. Ah, plenty of time. Found anyone you like the look of yet? D'Artagnan, do you have any wine? I have a bottle. Uh, Poor vintage, just enough to keep the food down. Answer Porthos's question, D'Artagnan. There might be someone. Ah, fool. But it doesn't matter. She's married. And beautiful. With hands that could move the earth and still look like she'd not done a day of work. If we passed each other on the street and I had all the trappings of a king, she wouldn't look at me twice. Seems we have ourselves another poet, Aramis. Incredible. You two must have been together quite some time. What? No, I just said she was married. Would someone like to explain to dear D'Artagnan how it works in Paris? Is marriage different here or something? Marriage is a cold transaction for money and power. If you enter looking for love, you will not find it. I thought... Come now, Athos, you're scaring him. D'Artagnan, look at me. Occasionally, women will come to me for religious guidance and confession. I feel like they come to you for a bit more than that. Porthos, you must stop believing every rumour you hear on the streets. In Paris, it is a luxury to marry for love. People marry to live, for protection from the cruel and the dangerous. But what happens when one does not love who they are married to? It's only natural to follow the heart. For where the heart leads, God will be there. That was unexpectedly kind of you. Yes. Do not get used to it. Fools. Can we not talk about this? It's a hopeless cause. Aw, look at him. He's blushing. Quiet. Clearly he doesn't think it's hopeless after all. She's married. And she doesn't even look at me. Quiet. Liven up, Athos. We're just trying to have a little fun. I see several men in the street. Friends of the Red Duke? Most likely. All in cavalier hats, spread out. Most with swords. Hmm. They're passing. None of them are bothering to look up. Yet. Good. Then I'm coming to take a look. Ah, look at them down there. With their huge, long feathers in their wide hats. Like they own the place. They must be using common peacock feathers. Pitiful. Perhaps they are unable to purchase ostrich. You see that one? Athos, Athos, come back here and look. Look how enormous it is. Size doesn't matter. (laughs) But they're certainly trying to compensate for something. How is it managing to stick straight up like that? Yes, D'Artagnan, it does make yours look uh, shriveled and flaccid in comparison. (laughs) Oh, merde. One of them turned around. Draw the curtains. No, if you draw the curtains, they'll see the movement more obviously from outside the window. Oops. Ah, pull the drapes back an inch so we can see. All right. There's only enough space for me to... Oh, God, one of them's coming back. Wait, he stopped a woman crossing the street. He's pointing to the house. 
Hold on, that's Constance. 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 Is she noble? Her name's familiar. Do you know her? He knows half the women in Paris. Now is not the time. We must stay quiet and alert. They're coming closer. I can't see them without sticking my head out the window. We're done for. If we don't leave, they'll shoot us in the stairwell like brats. Calm down. They can't even know that we're here. I'm going. Aramis, no! Porthos, get off it! Let go! Ow! Oh, mon dieu, my floor! Oh, the landlord will kill me. Porthos's fault! Well, it's your foot sticking through. Not all the way through. Quiet, both of you. Too late. Someone's coming. His Majesty, King Louis XIII, Monarch of France and Navarre. Your Majesty, a moment. Your Majesty, I should like to. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Captain, follow me. Ah, I haven't hunted for some time, you know. Who knew a king could be so bogged down by state affairs? Truly surprising, Your Majesty. Won't you ask how it went? Uh, I merely wish to inquire after His Majesty's health. But how did it go, Your Majesty? Bad, Monsieur! Bad! I am bored! Your Majesty is bored? Impossible! A fruitless hunt. I am an unfortunate king, Monsieur de Treville. I had but one girl, Falcon. He died. Day before yesterday. I should be obliged to give up hunting, as I have given up hawking. I cannot begin to comprehend your disappointment, but I think you have still a good number of falcons, sparrowhawks and turkles. And the cardinal was in my ear the whole time, talking on and on about Spain and Austria and England. Ah, the cardinal. Don't forget, I am vexed with you, Captain. And in what have I been so unfortunate as to displease your majesty? For what did I name you, captain of my musketeers, Treville? To let them run around and assassinate a man, incite a riot, and attempt to set fire to Paris, all in my backyard, Treville! But yet, hope to tell me, they're in prison, and justice has been delivered. Sire, on the contrary. I come to demand it of you. What? So your three damned musketeers and your newest youngster from Bern didn't descend upon Bernjou like vultures? That they didn't try to burn down Tremouille's hotel? And who told you this fine story, sire? Who else but he who watches while I sleep, who labours while I amuse myself? Does your majesty refer to God? No, monsieur. I speak of my only servant, of my only friend, of the Cardinal. His eminence is not his holiness, sire. The Pope is infallible, but not his cardinals. You mean to say that he deceives me? You mean to say that he betrays me? You accuse him, then? Come, speak. I bow freely that you accuse him. No, sire. I merely say he has not obtained his information from good sources. The accusation came from Madame de la Tremouille. From the Duke himself, just this morning. What do you say to that? I might answer, sire, that he is too deeply interested in the question to be a very impartial witness. But so far from that, sire, I know the Duke to be a royal gentleman, and I refer the matter to him, but upon one condition, sire. What? It is that your majesty will make him come here, will interrogate him yourself, tete-a-tete, without witnesses, and that I shall see your majesty as soon as you have seen the duke. What then? 
You will bind yourself by what Madame de la Tremouille shall say. Yes, sire. You will accept her judgment? Undoubtedly. And you will submit to the reparation she may require? As a gentleman, I must. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you were scheming. Laporte! Laporte! Oh, but where is my valet? I hear your majesty. I'm here. Laporte, let someone go instantly and find Madame de la Tremouille. I wish to speak with her at her earliest convenience. Captain, if you and your musketeers are guilty... If my musketeers are guilty, sire, the guilty shall be placed in your majesty's hands, who will dispose of them at your good pleasure. Does your majesty require anything further? Speak. I am ready to obey. Too late. Someone's coming. Quick, cover the hole with... My hat! All of you, hide. No! Not you, D'Artagnan. You need to get rid of whoever's... Aramis, into the cupboard. Porthos, behind it. I'll go behind the drapes. Oh, they won't cover your legs. You'll have to go under the bed, Monsieur Athos. Uh, is there nowhere else? Come on, Athos, what are you waiting for? Don't be such a ninny. Squash under the bed. Hurry! Uh, pardon, I'm coming. Please, Monsieur Athos. Very well. I'm coming. Ah, Madame Constance. It's just you. What a pleasant surprise. Just me? You are a strange tenant, Monsieur d'Artagnan. May I come in? Ugh, this isn't working. My head's sticking out behind the top. Aramis, Aramis, make room in the closet for me. I'm coming in. Let me just squeeze out from behind. No, no, there's no time. Porthos, no! Look, they'll see me. Now, scooch. Oh, you're so... You're so bloody fat these days. Why do you need to wear this much cambric? God, you're getting a little bit rotund, aren't you, darling? I thought I'd heard a loud noise from the garret and wanted to check in and make sure the cupboard hadn't fallen and crushed you. How thoughtful of you. The cupboard seems to be where I left it. What were you doing up here, raising a horse? <laughs> uh, um, the thing is, well, you see, I sort of... Dance. You dance. What, do you not believe me? All right, I'll just have to show you. And then... <laughs> graceful, Monsieur, exceedingly graceful. I can't do it when other people are watching, all right? Naturally, Monsieur. Enough of that. Uh, to what do I owe the pleasure of your company? A man downstairs was asking for a young monsieur of this address. I have to admit that for a moment I forgot we had a lodger, but he left a note. Thank you. Which reminded me. <clears throat> I had some spare fabric lying for additional covers. Our last tenant was always complaining about the night drafts. Uh, thank you. But these are not sewn. If you want me to sew them, that'll cost extra. Time is money, Monsieur d'Artagnan, and I may be beyond your means. But... I know you know how to sew. You do? Don't get tricky with me, young man. You mentioned it the first time we met. Oh, so I did. Ah, <sighs> Until next time, Monsieur d'Artagnan. <sighs> she remembered that I know how to sew. Is it, is it safe to come out now? Uh, yes, Monsieur Aramis. Oh, oh. oh. oh clever idea, D'Artagnan. Tripping over during the dance. Perfectly intentional. Uh, is she not the loveliest person on this earth? I did not get to see her. Someone was in the way. Oh, shush. I didn't see her either. I was too busy trying not to burst out laughing. To, 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 to what do I owe the pleasure of your company? Really, boy? Did you get a look at her, Athos? What did you think? Hmm. She has eyes and nose and lips with hair. Athos and women don't really mix. Appearances don't matter, kid. 
True beauty is in oh, the could heart. Could we please talk about something else? Uh, yes. What is this mysterious letter? Uh. Well? <clears throat> Monsieur d'Artagnan, I sincerely regret that you have fallen prey to the court's machination so soon after your arrival in Paris, but this is a delicate situation, and I ask that you follow these instructions to the letter. For better or worse, yourself, along with Monsieur Athos, Porthos and Aramis, must present yourselves to the king tomorrow at six in the morning. The four of you must wait by the back stairs. I shall be there. You must not be seen. Treville. Six in the bloody morning. Oh, we can take shifts to sleep in the bed. Ah, oh, that was better than my idea. Very well, D'Artagnan. Oh, I shall go first. Six in the bloody morning. <sighs> D'Artagnan. It is impolite to yawn before your superiors. I'm sorry, Monsieur Athos, I slept poorly. As did I. Good morning, Captain Treville. Good morning, all. Wait here. If you are not sent for within the hour, it may be best to flee Paris. Oh, you're joking. Uh, you may be accused of inciting a riot, maliciously attacking seven of his eminence's guards, and attempting to set fire to an entire street. It wasn't the... In- Tire Street. What is it with you on fire, Aramis? I will protect them, Monsieur de Treville. Do not worry. <sighs> I am glad my services have been valuable to you, Your Majesty. Ah. Oh. Monsieur de Chiville, his majesty has just sent for me in order to inquire of yesterday's events. I have told him all that Bernard recounted, that is to say that the fault lay with my people and that I was ready to offer you my excuses. Since I have the good fortune to meet you, I beg you to receive them and to hold me always as one of your friends. Madame. I was so confident of your loyalty that I required no other defenders before his majesty than yourself. I find that I have not been mistaken, and I thank you that there is still one person in France of whom may be said, without disappointment, what I have said of you. That's well said. Only tell her, Treville, since she wishes to be considered your friend, that I also wish to be one of hers. But she neglects me. That is nearly three years since I have seen the Duchesse de la Tremouille and that I never do see her unless I send for her. Tell her all this for me, for these are things which King cannot say for himself. My thanks, sire. Where are your musketeers? I told you the day before yesterday to bring them with you. Why have you not done so? They are below, sire, and with your permission, the poor will bid them come up. Yes, yes, let them come up immediately. It is nearly eight o'clock. And at nine, I expect a visit. Go, Madame de Chaux, and return often. Your Majesty. Come in, Treval. And yes, Laporte, you may show in our guests. Come in, my braves, come in. I am going to scold you. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Seven of his eminence's guards placed hors de combat by you four in two days. That is too many, gentlemen. Too many! If you go on so, his eminence will be forced to renew his company in three weeks. And I to put all the edicts in force in all their rigour. One now and then, I don't say much about. But seven in two days, I repeat... It is too many. It is far too many. Therefore, sire, your majesty sees that they are come, quite contrite and repentant, to offer you their excuses. Quite contrite and repentant? (laughs) I place no confidence in their hypocritical faces. In particular, there is one yonder of a Gascon look. Come hither, monsieur. 
Uh, he means you, lads. Uh. Why, Treville? You told me he was a young man. This is a boy! A mere boy! Do you mean to say that it was he who bestowed that severe thrust at Jussac? On those two weekly fine thrusts at Bernajou. Truly! Without reckoning that if he had not rescued me from the hands of Kaosak, I should not now have the honour of making my very humble reverence to your majesty. Why, he's the very devil, this Bernay. Ventre sans gris, monsieur de Travel. As the king my father would have said, but at this sort of work, many doubles must be slashed and many swords broken. Now, Gascons are always poor. Are they not? Uh, Laporte, go see if by rummaging all my pockets you can find 40 pistoles. And if you can find them, bring them to me. And now, let us see, young man, with your hand upon your conscience. How did this all come to pass? I am a farmer's son, your majesty. Uh, Paris is foreign to me. I was so excited of our meeting that I couldn't sleep. We went to play tennis where Bernard jeered at me and I made sure he almost paid for that with his life. I'm ashamed to say the matter almost cost Madame de Tremy her hotel. Simple as that. Mm. You Gascons are very matter-of-factly. No embellishment to the story. But this fits the Duke's account. Poor Cardinal. Seven men in two days. That ought to satisfy your revenge, gentlemen. If your majesty is satisfied, we are too. Speak for yourself. Oh, yes. I am. Ah, here comes the port. Proof of my satisfaction. My king, your most gracious majesty... There are no words to express my gratitude. There, there. Now, as it is half past eight, you may retire. For, as I told you, I expect someone at nine. Thanks for your devotedness, gentlemen. I may continue to rely upon it. May I not? Oh, oh sire, sire. sire. We, we would, would allow, allow ourselves to be cut to pieces, pieces in, in your majesty's, majesty's, service. majesty's service. Well, well. But keep hold. That will be better. You will be more useful to me. Treville, a word. There are no words to express. <laughs> as you have no room in the musketeers, and as we have besides decided that a novitate is necessary before entering that cause, place this young man in the company of the guards of Monsieur de Sasson, your brother-in-law. Ah, pardieu, Treval. I enjoy beforehand the face that the con will make. He will be furious, but I don't care. I am doing what is right. You don't have to split the money with us, D'Artagnan. It's yours. We prevail together, messieurs. You truly are a gallant fellow. I will only wish to imitate my betters. But I say. Aramis? <sighs> As you are so insistent, I shall not turn down these ten pistoles. But mark my words, D'Artagnan, they will not buy my affection. Your Majesty, His Eminence the Cardinal has just arrived at the Louvre and requests an audience with you. Yeah, he's coming upstairs right now. The Cardinal! Now! But he wasn't come for another half hour! Oh my god, shit! Shit, Treville! Right. You hide behind the curtains. You, Monsieur D'Artagnan, you are small. Perhaps you could hide... We must not be discovered here. And this time, I would rather run. Aramis is right. We must make a getaway. But, 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 but how, how do we get you out without... Oh, got it. Backstairs. I'll head him off. This way, gentlemen. Hurry. Ah, bonjour, Monsieur Cardinal. I was just about to send for you. Now tell me, how fares it with that poor Jossack and that poor Bernajou of yours? (laughs) 
We hope you've enjoyed episode 5 of The Three Musketeers. The cast in order of appearance was Artemis Lamb as Madame de la Tremouille, Rob Morrissey as Treville, Sam Turnbull as Bernajou, Peter Furbank as Aramis, Matthew McConkey as Athos, Adam Cotaguanca as Porthos, Alex Comeche as D'Artagnan, Natalia Umlian in Stone as Lepore, Jacob Cook, Anna Truesdale, Emily Tarbuck, and Arinatemi Abajule as Courtiers, Rian Mullen as King Louis, and Olivia Adderley as Constance. The Three Musketeers was jointly directed by Nicole Baltablanco, Lauren Brewer, Sania Saraf, and Daniel Mahala. Music created by Oli Fab. Main theme by Oli Fab and Kat Batalis. Editing was done by Ode Hoagy. Our Foley artists were Natalia Umlian in Stone and Jay Figueredo. This show is based off Alexandra Dumas's The Three Musketeers. Scripts were written by Jay Figueredo, Matthew McConkey, Izel Ilkin Salmon, and Sam Turnbull. The producer team was Sophie Tice, Victoria Lee Barofolo, Thomas Tomlinson, and Jay Figueredo. For a full list of cast and crew, see our website. I'm Anthony Ford. If you want to support the show, come join our Patreon page at patreon.com slash duads. That's D-U-A-D-S. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for listening to Thursday Thrillers right here on the Mutual Audio Network. Please consider subscribing to other days of the Mutual Feeds, including Monday Matinee for classic live and theatrical audio plays, Tuesday Terrors for horror audio drama, Wednesday Wonders, our science fiction and fantasy magazine, Friday Follies, our end-of-the-week comedy series, Saturday Story Circle for kids and families alike, and Sunday Showcase bringing you the very newest in audio releases from our United Artists of Audio right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.